Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. In the lake-rich regions of the world, algae blooms are a growing problem. Not only are the floating green scums a nuisance for anyone hoping to enjoy the water, they can turn toxic and threaten public health. The main driver behind these blooms is phosphorus, an element used widely in agriculture to fertilize crops, that can run from the land and into lakes, especially during heavy rains. A new study from the University of Wisconsin-Madison shows how soon after a storm phosphorus, loading, sparks algae explosions, but also describes the many other factors that weigh on when and whether the lake reaches a tipping point. The fact that you just had a big storm doesn't mean now you're going to get a big, algae, bloom. The blooms are much more complicated says Steve Carpenter, lead author of a report published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of the Sciences. Carpenter, Director Emeritus at UW-Madison Center for Limnology and Professor Emerit of Integrative Biology, led a team of researchers in a deep dive into long-term datasets collected on Lake Mendota, Madison's largest and longest studied body of water. And, in other lakes, previous research had documented big algae blooms following on the heels of big storms. But, in Lake Mendota, this dynamic is more complex. While phosphorus is undoubtedly the key ingredient for an algae bloom, Lake Mendota can stew for quite a while before serving one up. In fact, the report found that the mean lag time from a big storm to a big bloom is 15 days, with some delays between a heavy, phosphorus-delivering rain event and a notable algae bloom taking up to two months. So, what's going on? It turns out that phosphorus is only one part of the algae bloom recipe. Carpenter identifies three other key factors at play calm winds, warm surface waters and a low abundance of tiny crustaceans called zooplankton. Much like the annual, greening up, that occurs on land when winter thaws into spring, lakes see an explosion of growth, especially algae, as their waters warm. When it's windy, this algae is mixed into the water column, but when the wind dies down, it can float to the surface and form a bloom. And all of this can happen only if populations of algae grazing zooplankton are small. And a cool, gray, cloudy summer in 1993 kept surface water temperatures lower, resulting in remarkably few blooms even though the lake was loaded with phosphorus from heavy spring and summer rains. That According to the researchers, leaves one clear option for people who want to get water quality trending in a better direction and head off future algae blooms, turn off the phosphorus tap. It's not a quick fix, Carpenter says, but it's currently the only option on the table. The sun's is going to shine, the wind is going to blow, the grazers are going to fluctuate with the food web and species invasions, he says, the one thing you can really control is you can keep the phosphorus down. Stephen R. Carpenter, Mark R. Goller, Christopher J. Kukarik, Emily H. Stanley. 2022, November 28th. Big rains bring big algae blooms, eventually. Science Daily. Retrieved November 29, 2022 from ift.tt slash new 2 y University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel for more videos.